but it's grey and dark and cold and windy outside. Just going to go around again inside, taking some time to enjoy myself with uh, the new series, the Winter Series of Secrets. Next one on here, Secrets 9, uh, in a French bar. So to start off the colours using the sponge roller, I'm going to use alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson and then a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm working up layers of this colour and as it dries very quickly being acrylic and using it thinly on the roller it means that I can put one layer over another just like watercolour very very quickly to get the depth of tone that I need so I can use it transparently at first across the drawing and then gradually make it thicker and thicker by putting more and more layers on. After that I start to add some purple, some light mauve and work that over the colour as well and you can see how I'm building up these different layers of the acrylics with the roller and gradually adding other colours into it as I go along. So watercolour, by using the colour thinly I can make a thin glaze or lighter colour by adding one colour over another I can make it darker or I can add white into it to make it lighter or as now I'm taking Prussian blue and I'm starting to work my darks up I'm going straight from my mid-tones down to my darker tones I'll work right the way down from the Prussian blue into the blacks then I'm going to start working my light tones from the middle tones back up towards the light tones again It's surprising just how much detail can be done with the sponge roller not only by using it on its edge to make lines but also blocking in patterns like this And again I can make glazes by either using more water with the paint making it thinner or using the paint thinner on the roller almost like a dry brush so very little paint on the roller. Now I'm going to start working my mid-tones out towards the lighter so here I'm using a light violet. Next I start working with my cool and warm greens so I'm using some emerald green and then some turquoise green a green. My next mix of colours is going to go lighter still. I'm going to use cadmium or chrome yellow, either will do with white, to start to make a warm cream. I have three sources of light. The white light or blue light from the windows, the warm light from the candles where I'm working now, which is going to be a much warmer yellow with the cadmium and chrome and then later on through to lemon yellow and white which is much a cooler yellow and then also the lamps above which are a yellow light. This means that every surface that faces towards a light will catch those colours. So surfaces facing the window will catch the light and white and blue light and also be dark against that light, surfaces facing the yellows will catch those yellow lights and surfaces away from the light will be much darker and cooler. Next I should move on to using a brush. This means that I can start refining the details. I can put heavier paint on or I can still glaze with the brush. I can put highlights back in or I can take them out with the darks. I can refine edges a lot of edges do need uh, refining. I can put the darks and lighter areas in as and when I please and just generally tidy up and pull the whole painting together. Also with the windows I can go in there and make the streaks of light and the ideas of the lace curtains and so on all the way down, putting in much heavier colour as I wish. The idea with a painting like this is if you start loose you can gradually tighten up more and more and more as you wish. You are the person that's in control. You can't really start tight and then go loose. So if we start loose we can go tighter and tighter and then when we feel it's finished we can say that's it, put the brush down. This means that we're able to not only paint very loosely and enjoy the painting but it also means that it still stays fairly contemporary. We can keep it nice and abstract, we can use the abstract qualities we don't start trying to paint a photograph from the start. We start making a painting about light and atmosphere and all the background tones and then gradually pull those out. Working with a sponge roller is a bit like Turner in a way because you work as a mood painting. You work about the light and atmosphere and tone and the feeling and the spiritual feeling of the whole painting. You block in all of these background shapes and also the idea is to simplify as much as possible 
to start using just single brush strokes if possible and just blocking in nice areas looking at the fine abstract shapes that you've got there of different colours patterned one to another a bit like a jigsaw put the right colours in the right places and the right shapes relevant one to another and the whole painting just begins to appear as you see here when I have a colour on my brush I tend to use it not just in the one place but everywhere that it exists and then wash my brush Well, this time it's the last one of the larger ones of the, in this series, uh, winter 2021. But the moment. Um, I'm going to go on to some one metre square ones after this and uh, some smaller ones and then we'll see what other compositions I can make up. This is a more complicated one. I hope it's going to work alright. Um, Say so down here especially where things almost fell off the bottom of the um, canvas. But it's a street scene and uh, I've no idea how it's going to come out. It's going to be quite fun. Okay, well the first thing to do is to wet the sponge roller. Don't soak it, or if you do, then dry it off in a paper towel or towel afterwards, just so it's damp. If it's too wet, then the paint becomes too wet and all the liquid um, squeezes out and comes down your canvas. We're going to put on uh, our mid-tones first, work from our mid-tones down to our darkest tones, and then work back from those mid-tones up towards the lighter ones at the end. We can do this by putting on thinner glazes, or thicker glazes, one on top of the other. We can adjust the thickness of the paint quality, of course, and we can also add more water. So we can make the paint thinner by water, or thinner by the amount of paint on the roller. And like watercolour, if we go one colour over another, and it's the same colour in fact, we can make a darker glaze, just like watercolour. So we've got all these variations of being able to use thicker or thinner paint, more water, less water putting one colour over another, putting one colour over the same colour and you can see already there just above my right shoulder how one colour has gone over another and starting to make glazes and changing the colours underneath already. Now for those of you who are just beginning and haven't done much with watercolour before, if you put uh, one colour over another in watercolour it's called a glaze and it makes the colour underneath one tone darker each time you do it. With watercolour you can only work dark over lights but the thing with acrylics is you can work the lights over the darks as well so if we put a glaze one over another it will go darker but if we want to we can put a light glaze over another and let the, col and let the colour just show through underneath or make it much lighter by having heavier paint. This will also change the way that we mix or make paint because with glazing with watercolour if we want orange we can mix orange or we can drop uh, red into yellow or we can actually put a thin layer of red on and yellow over the top or a thin layer of yellow and red over the top. We can do that of course here with the acrylics. We can put uh, yellow on and put red over the top or the other way around uh, in thin layers and that will give the effect of um, the orange which we're going to make. Also though with broken colour Broken colour, like the Impressionists, is when we have little dots of colour one next to another and the eye is fooled. So if we put red and yellow dots together, close together, from a distance the eye is fooled to seeing orange. If we use the broken colour technique by using the roller gently over the surface, so for instance if I have uh, yellow and I just put the roller slightly dry with the red over the top, the yellow shows through underneath because it's the texture of the canvas, the same other way around. So we can get the effect of a glowing orange with broken colour that way. So we have glazing, we have putting one colour over another, which is only transparent to let the colour show through, or we can use that slightly broken colour technique. As you see now, we've worked up through the medium tones down to the darks, and we're almost down to our final darks before I move from the sponge roller onto the brush. I like to work very loosely with the sponge roller, giving an effect of light, giving an effect of atmosphere, getting all these lovely textures um, by using the sponge roller one layer over another. It doesn't have to be exact, we can tighten up with the brush afterwards. I like to work within a fairly tight drawing, because otherwise we tend to enhance or exaggerate the bad points in the drawing. So a reasonably good drawing, and then work loosely within that drawing. But don't worry about going over the edges, we can pull those together again afterwards by using a brush, as you're going to see me doing in just a moment. 
and then the reverse. I start working all of my medium tones upwards, lighter and lighter, putting on the highlights. I can go right through to whites doing this, but I won't in this case. I'm just going to build up the lighter medium tones and then use the brush for the light colours. Working with the brushes, I'm able to use as many methods and techniques as I like. I can use thinner paint with the glazes, or I can put impasto paint on heavily with the brush. I can use a filbert round-ended brush, I can use a round-pointed brush for details, or I can use the flats. Here you see me painting in with a flat, and just painting in some cadmium red, solidly, before I start working colours over the top. Then with smaller brushes, I can work the finer details up, so I can go any way, either way, any direction I want at any time. As with watercolour, it makes sense to choose a brush that will suit the shape you're painting. If I'm going to paint square windows, then I'll use a flat square-ended brush. If I want a long, thin line, I can either use the edge of a filbert sideways, or a small, rounder brush. Here you see me painting in the lines on this uh, shade with a flat, just dragging it straight downwards, and I chose the flat the same width as the lines. As you've seen, we started this painting very loosely with the sponge roller, even going over edges. If we start loose, we can go tighter and tighter and tighter until we're happy that the eventual uh, painting is tight enough, is neat enough, is tidy enough, is what we want. We don't want to make a photographic representation straight away. If you start tight, you can't go loose. So my sponge roller started very loosely and my brushwork is fairly loose at the moment. I like to try and keep the single strokes or nice slabs of paint. I'm very aware of abstract shapes and the abstract quality. I want to keep a fairly contemporary feel to the painting. Having said that, I'm very aware of textures in much of my work. The textures created by the sponge roller are quite strong in the background. And with the brush now I'm able to make more textures, either with the wicker work in the chairs, or on cloth, or even on little pebbles and bits of stonework down below on the pavement. But even so, there's one very important word in my painting here, Impressionism, Impressionist. It's only an impression of something. I'm not recreating photographically, I'm just making an impression by using quick marks, strokes, textures, the feeling of something, the movement, the light, the, the moment. I think for me it's one of the most pleasurable times in painting, is when I've worked about three quarters of the way through a work and I'm painting in the final highlights at the end, I'm making the whole painting come to life and sparkle. When I've painted all my deep tones on, my mid tones, and then at the very end I can come back to the sunlight that cascades across the leaves on trees and so on, or get the flooding of light coming through on a lawn. Here I'm just picking up the highlights on shutters and on pieces of uh, masonry and so on on the buildings. If you're watching fairly carefully, you'll notice that my colours will be playing with light against dark, warm against cool, and rough against smooth. And very often in a painting, if I want something to be stronger, I will paint the opposite. So, if something needs to be cooler or warmer, I will paint the opposite to that. If I've got a strong orange and I want the orange to be more orange, I don't necessarily paint more orange on. I'll paint some green or blue next to it to make that orange seem warmer. This is a reason I like to use long brushes as well. I'm standing back from the painting. I can reach out almost like a fencing match and touch the surfaces, but I can see from a distance uh, what's happening all around the painting. I can see if just one little point of colour used somewhere will bring something out somewhere else. In this particular painting, you'll notice the bright reds and the yellows and so on working against each other. That I might just put one little bit of very cool yellow not far away from a piece of warm yellow so that the opposites will enhance each other. I 
I think it's fair to say that we can't go lighter than white, we can't go whiter than white, and we can't go darker than black. The Impressionists banned black totally from their palettes because they believed that where there is light there must be colour. If there is white and light is shining on it, the white will be affected by that colour, as will black. I use black now, especially in these paintings, and I do find that I tend to use it towards the very end of a painting. The same with the white. I leave the white till the very end when I can't use any lighter colours or lighter tints of colour as my last resort and sparkle. So you'll see in this painting, I finish the whole painting and then come back to the whites at the very, very end. And as any one colour will affect the colour next to it or around it, the white certainly will. Putting white in will bring all the colours out surrounding it. Please be aware of that when you're painting, because obviously if you're even using light tones of uh, colour, you can affect the colour next to it. Well, I've got on a while with this up to last night. I want to now just get to the very lightest colours. I just need to work some white into it. And we'll see if I need to pick out any other colours. I think once I get the white on, the other colours will come through more. And then, I'm going to go into this lettering. It's going to take quite a bit of time. The lettering actually is very important because it gives that ambience. Those French names give that extra dimension. As with all of the secret series, we've got different things happening with the figures, we've got different things happening with the colours and the, and the dimensions of, of the uh, shapes and abstract designs, or all the contemporary things happening and, and the um, painterly things happening within, within a painting like this. But uh, also there's the images themselves and just what are these people doing, interrelating, interacting between each other. Right, let's get on then. Water dries out, the acrylic medium starts to dry, we've got to keep the paint the right consistency. To that size, down to that size, I should say, I've got to paint very carefully. Of course, to here now. I've got to get this lifting in between here. Now, when we start coming down to the very small letters, which are harder to see behind here, we can start to make some of it up.
seal the orange, put a little more orange in and put a cooler against it to make it stand out more. Thank you. 